Thank you very much. I just wanted to start with a bit of history and background and context, just to show you how we have arrived where we have come with uh, ISO 45003. So the Technical Committee 283 is one of, I think, about 2,000 technical committees active at ISO at any given time. And it was responsible for producing 45001, which was the Occupational Health and Safety Management System. Uh, in the context of that, can you hear me? Sorry. Am I we hear you fine. You can. Okay. Yeah. I thought I heard somebody telling me I was muted. Okay. Uh, anyway, this uh, was published in two is in 2018. And in the process of developing that standard, we worked very hard to try and recognize that among the risks that the employer has to consider are psychosocial risks. So out of, out of that discussion came a recognition that we had a need for an additional standard specifically oriented to psychological health and safety in the workplace. So Canada then adopted 45001 as a national standard of Canada. And we adopted it with some variations, what, which we are calling enhancements, that brought our standard, uh, yeah, our, our Canadian adoption into line with the uh, ISO, uh, pardon me, with the CSA Z1000, which was the um, management system standard we have developed in Canada, which is now being transitioned out. So, on this slide, it identifies some of the things that were in 45001 to recognize the importance of identifying psychosocial risk. So, this is increasingly a significant public health issue. You know, it was interesting when I produced this slide. It says that there's now an emphasis in a shift from infectious diseases to mental health conditions. And this slide, I must confess, was developed in a pre-COVID era. However, the point rel remains that the issues relating to mental health in the workplace does remain a challenge and perhaps an increasing challenge in the COVID era for employers, employees, and the people who are uh, associated with them. Uh, Peter's given some very powerful statistics about the uh, UK experience, and we have similar information uh, with respect to worldwide uh, impact. So this again predicts the impact of lost economic output on a global basis of $16.3 trillion in the years that are listed there. The other point is that it is useless to spend money when its expense could be prevented and that mental health tr treatment is affordable and cost effective. And that the estimate is that it returns a fourfold investment on the uh, on on the effort to prevent. So it makes a strong case for a cost benefit analysis. Now, just back to the Canadian context, we have over the years had a management system standard in Canada, which was Z1000. And under Z1000, we have developed what we are calling a suite of standards. We're very careful not to call them substandards because that has a negative connotation. But the list here on this slide is the list of standards which are under the Z1000, which now will become the 45001 suite of standards. I've highlighted in red Z1003, which is our Canadian Psychological Health and Safety in the Workplace Standard. And I've also highlighted in green Z1008, which is a standard which is now out for public review through the Canadian Standards Association. This is the management of impairment in the workplace. So those of you who are interested in that dimension might want to log on and offer your comments on that standard as it develops. So this graphic then points out to Z1003 as foundational to the work going forward. We have uh, then advanced uh, what we have learned in Canada and what is reflected in Z1003 uh, to the international level. So 
On these next two slides are the guiding principles that underline Z1003. And the Canadians who have participated in the international work in 45,003 have tried to encourage the reflection of these principles in our new standard. And of course, one of the fundamental principles is that an organization needs to be legal in terms of what is required of it in the workplace. And uh, it should be considered that the, that the company should consider its legal ob obligations as a minimum standard of practice. The point is that's made in the second bullet is that it is the shared responsibility among all way workplace stakeholders to advance psychological health and safety in the workplace. Following the, are some other ones with respect to the importance of respectful relationships in the workplace, individual responsibility, and of course, reflective in management system standards everywhere is a strong commitment by senior management. So the principles that are identified on these slides A through H have been advocated for in terms of our participation at the um, at the international level. So based on our positive experience with Z1003 in Canada, and based on our efforts uh, in terms of participating in 45001, Canada took the initiative to advance a new work item proposal to ISO for a new standard entitled Psychological Health and Safety in the Workplace. So we think that there is a benefit to this becoming an international standard as it will continue to raise the profile of this very important issue and also provide practical guidance for organizations on how to manage psychosocial risk. And that is only accomplished when we are able to identify the risk factors and determine concrete steps that should be taken to improve the working environment. So this graphic put, puts out uh, attempts to sort of talk about the elements that are contributing as we try and approach, approach the concept of psychosocial risk. That there are factors that are specific to the workplace, which may be physical factors. There are factors which exist as social factors in our communities, environmental factors, and an increased emphasis on wellness. So the ballot that was put forward by Can uh, as a new work item proposal by Canada was uh, accepted. It was strongly approved with 48 uh, countries voting in favor of it, three against and 10 abstentions. So as a consequence of this ballot, the responsibility was assigned to, to uh, TC283's working group two, uh, which is headed psycho psychological health and safety in the workplace and Canada was awarded the convenership. Uh, and so we are now have a, a very active uh, mirror committee, uh, which is managed by the Canadian Standards Association. And we also have very active participation uh, by Canadian experts on the development of 45,003. In fact, we've just come off this morning, uh, uh, the second in a series of seven teleconferences, which are necessary because ISO has shut down all face-to-face -face meetings. So instead of um, being in Cancun, Me Cancun, Mexico this morning, I was sitting in my sunroom and participating in this along with four other Canadian participants. So we have strong representation at the international level. So the first meeting was held in Coventry. Uh, there were 39 ex, or pardon me, 38 experts uh, from 19 P and O countries. ISO has two levels of membership. We have what are called participating members, and those are people who sign on and commit to participate, and O members, which are observing members. Those people have the entitlement to um, get drafts of the standards as they progress. So uh, Canada is a participating member. There are also liaison organizations. Uh, there's some are listed there, and the number of liaison organizations continues to grow. Liaison organizations cannot 
vote on ballots, but they can have input as the standards are developed. So at the first meeting in Coventry, we received presentations from five countries who have had rich and different experience in terms of psychological health and safety in the workplace. Of course, our Canadian standard was uh, presented uh, and this, of course, uh, what's on this slide is uh, the available worldwide. There have been um, multi thousands of downloads and it is available for free on CSA's workplace. That works, sorry, CSA's um, work says. We also had a presentation from the UK on past 1010. And this, uh, there's some history here on how it had been developed. So the uh, UK delegation also continues to be very uh, positively and heavily involved in the development of 45,003. Australia, as well as uh, continuing to make a significant contribution, it has a systemic uh, management system approach, which is available through a national guidance document that was produced in January 2019. And it also um, links, the links the recognition of poor psychological work, workplace health and safety to psychological and physical injuries. The last presentation was received from our J Japan uh, Japanese colleagues. Um, the one difference with the Japanese model is it's very much a medical model. It focuses on, uh, you know, the uh, mental health conditions of the workers and some attempts to understand uh, the improvements necessary to the work environment as well as risks. So uh, I would say that it's more likely that the influence on the standard as it's being developed is coming more strongly from Canada, the UK, and from uh, Australia. So at the Coventry meeting, we decided that we would try and follow the structure of 45001. So the main clause headings that are in 45001 are now reflected in 45003. We also decided that 45001 would be identified as a normative reference, which in a, an ISO standard means that the necessary to the understanding of our standard, which is a guidance standard, is a clear understanding of 45001. So the first uh, effort was then to um, prepare a, a draft document uh, for distribution to working group two members, and it went out for comment, and that uh, started the flood of response. One of the other issues was how detailed the um, the standard itself should be, and how important will it be to put tools and resources into annexes. So this is a continuing discussion about the level of detail that's in our guidance standard uh, versus the kind of in additional information that could be provided. So the second meeting was held in Dallas. And again, the number of participating countries has increased. There were a thousand comments on the first working draft. So our time in Dallas was spent considering these and dispositioning them. One other thing that occurred at the Dallas meeting that was quite interesting was uh, an interest in expressively, expressly uh, adding uh, the concept of well-being into the scope of our document and uh, the guidance which it will provide. The reason was, and this is kind of standards politics, is there was another standard development uh, technical committee looking at developing a standard, a management system standard on workplace well-being. So this became a turf issue so that we felt that we had uh, our, you know, uh, an intrusion into an area that really belonged to us. So the uh, decision was made to emphasize well-being in our standard. And the outcome was that it didn't head off the other technical committee who are, who are currently working on a management system standard in that area. The one other thing that was important as a consequence of the uh, discussions in Dallas was to make sure that it was very clear that the rec relationship between 45,000 and, 40, and 45,000 and one and 45,003 had to be explicitly stated. So this creates a dis discussion about how detailed the requirements of 45,001 should be expressed in 45,003. So we're trying to uh, do a, a service to the end user of 45,003 
by highlighting, but not repeating the 45,001 requirements. The other thing that was really interesting was to, to have a discussion around how the hierarchy of controls, which is explicitly uh, ex um, identified in 45,001, applies to psychosocial risk. So we continued to put this together. Uh, we had a lot of interesting discussion around the terms psychological health and safety and psychosocial risk, and we are continually having to conduct a continuity edit to make sure that we are using the terms correctly. So the third meeting was held in Kigali in um, uh, October, and this was a very interesting meeting. If anyone who knows the history of Rwanda knows about the horrible impact of the genocide on that country. And so it was quite interesting to be in that environment when we're talking about psychosocial risk, partly because one of the impetus for the development of Z1003 was Romeo Dallaire and Stéphane Grenier, who had been on the ground in Rwanda at the beginning of the genocide. So this uh, goes back to uh, another discussion that was identified in the con in the um, question to Peter is whether or not management system standards can be um, considered to be the law. Are they regulatory? In Canada, our process is uh, one of what's called incorporation or, or, uh, by reference. So if a standard is referenced in legislation, then it does get the uh, the effect of have of being um, enforceable in law. So one of the other things that was clear as a, as we discussed this at the Kigali meeting was that 45,003 will not be a certification standard, but it will provide guidance on how to manage psychosocial risk within certification to 45,001. So the structure of the standard is here. It follows the titles that are um, reflective in 45001, and this slide points out that 45001 is a normative reference. So this is um, a statement, uh, the, the beginning of every standard is a scope statement. What this in effect does was, is put a fence around what the standard is to deal with. What I have highlighted in red on this slide is this some of the evolution of the scope sta statement to make sure that we are clear on the intention of the standard. So the scope statement that we started with in the original draft that came out of Coventry has been evolving with the addition of those uh, things that are in red. With respect to uh, the section two, which is the terms and definition, pardon me, section three, which is the terms and definitions, we have uh, identified these two definitions, uh, the definition on psychosocial risk, and uh, the definitions then are backed up with um, notes to entry to try and provide a stronger link to the, uh, the standard under development. And the note at the bottom of this page provides uh, information that there are tables in the 45,003, which will really assist organizations to uh, identify psychosocial hazards. The other definition, which we've been struggling with, is the definition of well being at work. And again, there's a definition here and two qualifications uh, provided in notes to entry. Clause four is the context of the organization. And this is, I think, one of the most important thing of it to be found in any management system standards. And this really assists the organization in, in understanding its own context, which helps to keep the standard that's developed and the, pro the, the process that is used to be relevant to the organizational conditions and context. So it uh, organ requires organizations to consider the internal and external factors which can affect the achievement of the outcomes of its management system standard. Here, of course, we are interested in the uh, psychosocial risk management. Second is understanding of the needs and expectations of workers and other interested parties. 
And thirdly is in considering how these needs and expectations are either uh, or could become legal requirements. So the uh, this side continues with some of the um, factors that are to be considered as part of the context of the organization. Clause five is leadership and worker participation. Again, this is a fundamental uh, element of 45,001 and is equally reflected in 45,003. Uh, it, the, the opening statement says that successful management of psychosocial risk calls for top management commitment and that top management and workers at all levels should help to drive it. I've put an asterisk beside this because there's been some challenge. Really, a management system standard cannot put duties on workers. So we're trying to come up with wording that will make sure that the importance of worker contribution is uh, recognized. But then there's a series under five of how the top management uh, should uh, approach demonstrating this commitment. The uh, five two requires a policy, either a policy specific to the management of psychosocial risk in the workplace, or ensuring that the policy, the main H and S policy in the organization, reflects the importance of managing psychosocial risk. It also makes the case of the importance of ensuring consistency across all of the policies of the organization, such as its policies to uh, its human resource management and to social responsibility to try and ensure uh, continuity of these policies. Section six is the planning section. And here is where we have um, identified the actions that are necessary to address the risks and opportunities of uh, with respect to psychosocial risk in the workplace. And we have I de developed and spent a lot of time this morning discussing some tables, which are identified in three aspects. The tables um, assist in ident identifying psychosocial hazards in three uh, elements, how work is organized, social factors, and work equipment, pardon me, work environment equipment and hazardous tasks. So the idea then is that there are objectives for planning to identify the conditions and circumstances uh, and the de worker demands which have the potential to impair psychological health and well being in the workplace, to identify the primary risk factors which would be necessary to be addressed in order to improve the working environment and to identify and control the work-related hazards within the occupational management system framework. Section seven is support. I've just highlighted uh, the um, opening uh, guidance for with respect to resources, again, which looks at the organization's obligation to examine its infrastructure and the resources that are necessary with respect to managing psychosocial risk in the human financial technological infrastructure and equipment resources. I'm not going into detail on the additional um, parts of clause seven, but these are ha highlighted as indicated there. Competence is organizational competence and individual competence to deliver the necessary results. Awareness is to make sure that people are familiar with the intention and the um, uh, objectives of the management system. Communication, again, is the, the vehicles by which that is uh, identified. Again, these are all headings out of 45,001. And 4,000, uh, 4, pardon me, Clause 7, 5 talks about documented information, which is required by a management system. And here we are highlighting the importance of confidentiality, given the specific sensitivity of information that may be collected. Part eight is operational planning and control. And here is where we get into the actual, you know, when you think about a management system in the plan, do, check, act mode, this is the, the, the do mode. What are we doing to put into place the strategies that are necessary to eliminate hazards and reduce um, OSH risks? And again, we've tied the risk control measures back to the aspects which were identified in the three tables. 
we've also put in to this section uh, some information on signs of exposure to psychosocial risk. And then the remaining sections which are identified there are also ones that are straight out of 45,001. Clause 9, again, when we're talking about the Plan, Do, Check, Act model, this is the check model, is to monitor, measure, and analyze the performance of the system with respect to the management of psychosocial risk and the strategies to be used to achieve this, including internal audits and management review. Clause 10 is the uh, act, which is where we're uh, improving using what we have learned from the measuring and monitoring activities, which include performance evaluations, incident reports, consultation, outcomes, audits, and management reviews. Putting these this information into place to improve the system and to go back through the continuous improvement loop. So I'm not sure I'm doing for time, but uh, if you're interested in additional information, uh, ISO 283 has a, a, a website, um, and also we have a, 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 te a technical committee website, which has more information on the standard. And uh, both Peter and I are active in this and can provide additional information. Great, thank you very much, Laura. A lot of detail, I think, to uh, cover, and uh, there are a number of comments here just disappeared before my very eyes. Um, and in fact, um, the ones. so the first one actually was related to the CSA standard in terms of um, why a shared responsibility when the employer is responsible for health and safety legally. Um, and I don't know if that continues through the ISO one where there's an emphasis on this concept of shared responsibility versus, although safety does have the internal responsibility system aspect to it too. Well, yeah, and I think that any standard that puts duties on management has to ensure consultation and participation of workers. So the obligation remains on the uh, organization to consult and encourage the input of workers. However, the um, workers themselves have the not just the opportunity, but the um, perhaps, uh, we don't want to call it an obligation, but should recognize the importance of their contribution. Okay, and um... It's not established consensus that embedding addressing psychological health and safety within a management system will address items important to workers. I guess just the concept of using this management system tool, I guess, mm -hmm. to uh, um, will it necessarily find and identify uh, items important to workers. And in fact, one question that arose for me that's related to this was whether there was any sort of a, um, use of a survey tool built into the standard in order to hear from workers and understand impact or what's happening. I think the... So if I just interject on that one, um, it should be seen as one of a range of processes. So uh, the management system is one aspect but it's the psychosocial environment outside of that that influences the uptake of the management system. So, sorry, Norma, over to you. Someone unmuted me, you know what I'm like, I'll talk all the time. <laughs> Thanks, Norma. Yes, did you have any response to that? Uh, I just wanted to say that a survey tool may be one of the strategies that an organization would use, mm -hmm. but I think we are reluctant to dictate to an organization that it ought to use that tool it you know it's it's a suggestion rather than an obligation so i guess maybe the, the then so you're saying there's certainly encouragement in the standard um to involve workers but it um uh, but it by virtue of being a management system and with management responsibility it's not 
I guess it depends on how it's applied and how much engagement there is in, in the workplaces. Right. And it is an any management system standard. And Section 5 is very, very important because it is headed leadership and worker participation. Right. It's the it's the heading. Right. So, you know, we, we have a saying, you know, if you're getting run out of town, get up front and pretend you're leading a parade. Right. It, it makes no sense to be providing leadership unless the leadership has people who are willing, interested and able to follow it. Worker consultation has to be uh, as part of that process, uh, be it trade unions or be it, you know, workers committees or informal consultation via line managers and training. Uh, to, to sort of to do that because if if, if not then we, you're taking a top down approach top down approach to a bottom a bottom up problem and then you need to, you need to do something uh, in doing that you know in terms of helping to um, to get people to talk um, yeah so any management system requires the engagement of their employees exactly. yeah. Yeah, otherwise it's just a binder right um, yeah, yeah, exactly. yeah, yeah. Some of the uh, comments are, I guess, more like comments, but um, one around we have health and safety regulations in Canada that aren't actually enforced yet, necessarily, um, and there's no compliance. So that's with the CSA standard, I guess, and with respect to legal um, consequences, this new international standard is a great step. What's the mechanism to enhance enforcement? And I guess that's... Yeah. If I could speak to that. Um, right now, all of the legislation in Canada, which is provincial and territorial, with the exception to the federal Canada Labor Code, is really, uh, it's almost like a banana republic, right? We have this wide range of legislation. However, all of the legislation is program focused. And that approach is different. Sometimes in some places it's prescriptive. For example, in Manitoba, it tells you how high the tow board on your scaffold has to be. In other jurisdictions, it's enabling. Basically, do what you have to do to keep people from being killed and injured. The one advantage of a management system standard adopted into law, incorporated by reference, would require organizations to manage health and safety in the workplace beyond simply having programs. Yeah, okay. I mean, Thanks. Just addressing that question on the that regulation, I and a number of other regulators in similar roles across uh, the globe are having informal teams uh, meeting where we discuss how um, how we use regulation to enforce in psychological uh, issues. So um, they are looking at what we're doing and seeing what we've done and where we've made you know, we need to tweak the elements and they're trying to apply it in their own legal system. So I'm thinking of, a, of uh, Australia um, and some work uh, through the total worker health in America. So there is some, um, there's a will amongst regulators to do this. It's just that it's practice makes perfect, isn't it? So um, I do think like, you know, if we'd had the same approach to asbestos, thousands would be dying. Um, and or millions, it would effectively die. But actually, you know, let's let's be let's be brutally honest here. People are dying. People are taking their own lives because of work-related stress from an utterly preventable condition. And we we must stand up. And if you if you if motivation through telling people nice things about what it's it, it, it in itself is enough of motivation, then the the regulation should be there and should be used appropriately. I'm not saying use it all the time. I'm just saying it might actually, it may work, you know, and that's certainly the thinking across different independent regulators. Great, thanks. We do have to move to the next speakers, but there was one comment I thought that it would be. So the word prevention, um, someone was asking it in all this management language, where is, where is prevention? Right up front in our scope. 